Hey guys, before the video starts, please subscribe, hit that like button, tell us what you're thinking, follow us at Nerd Reptiles on Twitter, also New England Reptile on Instagram, Evil Morph God underscore official on Instagram, check us out on Facebook, but please like our channel, spread the word, we're trying to build this up, and the more interest we're getting, the more videos we're gonna do, and hopefully these videos are helping you better keep your animals. So we've addressed going into a pet store and buying one of the pre-made snake cages, usually, you know, fish tank style caging. So that would be Zoomed, Zilla, uh, Exoterra. They make awesome, awesome different cages. You can also buy some of the, uh, the professionally made cages like Animal Plastics, Freedom Breeder. There's so many different cages that you could get. There's also another way to keep your animals, and this is a, a very effective, easy way to do it. And uh, generally, we sell these in our pet store, but you could also go to Walmart. So right now, I'm looking at Sterilite. So one of the first things we're gonna do, we're looking at plastic bins that have locking lids. Most important thing, all these plastic bins have air holes, ventilation. So without that, with that little gasket, they become airtight and you could kill your animal. So one of the first things you wanna do, hot soldering iron or a drill and you could actually create uh, air holes. You want actually a fair bit of air holes, and that's all dependent on what species you're keeping, what substrate you're using, and location of your water bowl over your heating pad. But let's, actually, let's break down this setup. So if I look at something like this, I'm thinking colubrid. I'm thinking, you know what I'm actually thinking? I'm thinking hognose. Let's look at this little guy. So this little hognose this would be a fine way to manage this snake. I could go a bit bigger, but this little guy would have no problem doing very well in this cage. He'd also do very fine in here. You'd actually, uh, an adult one would actually do excellent in this. So this little hog nose, this is a colubrid. So this animal comes from North America and it lives often in a deserty or very arid type situations. So it is very tolerant of drier situations. So I would naturally know it since it's a colubrid, it doesn't have to be as warm as a boa or a python. So I would think that aspen bedding is acceptable. So aspen bedding uh, for colubrids, so California king snake, just king snakes, corn snakes, hog nose, rosy boas, sand boas. This is excellent. So then we have a little heating pad. The heating pad's great. So what the heating pad is gonna do, once again, it's gonna get underneath one spot here. We're gonna put a, a simple little setup. So bedding, heating pad. We can uh, put a little hide over the heating pad. Water dish. This actually water dish also serves as a hide too. They'll go right underneath there. So this is Basic parameters, the only other thing we probably want to think about, knowing what our temperature is. So this digital thermometer probe, I can go and put in here. I'm basically gonna look for temperatures roughly about 86 degrees on the warm end, and uh, ambient temperatures, you know, 78 to 80-ish are fine. But I can achieve all that inside this little bin. But this little bin actually is uh, very simple, but it's a very good way to manage your new snake and actually give it all the stuff that it actually needs. All right, let's say I have a ball python. So I have roughly a three foot ball python. This is a python. So boas and pythons are being very, very similar in what they need. These are tropical species. So let's, let's think beyond the 20 long fish tank. What size bin could I actually keep this animal successfully in? Well, this is the right bin for it. And we have a little bit more going on in this kit besides the colubri kit. Colubrids are more durable than a lot of pythons and boas, so they're a little bit more forgiving in failures uh, as far as husbandry. They're, uh, pythons and boas are not nearly as tolerant as uh, humidity woes in something like a uh, hog nose or a king snake or a colubrid. So in this kind of situation, we have more going on. So for a ball python, we're going to want the right kind of bedding. And the, the bedding for this could be it could be aspen, but if I had my way, I'm gonna use some kind of forest litter. So something like cypress mulch. And, and in a cage like this, now remember, the humidity in these cages is naturally higher than a fish tank. 
So I don't need as much substrate. So if I had a few inches of substrate in here, that's perfect. With that being said, if I put a heating pad underneath one third of the cage, put it under there, put my substrate over it. Now I can put things in here to clutter it up. Any of this kind of stuff like that to clutter it up. So I want to have a hot spot, 90, 95, and I want a cooler area, I'd probably say optimally about 82. If I notice that my heating pad is heating the cage up too much, what do I do? Well, I can easily rectify that by adding more air holes. I might have to add 50 air holes, but essentially if I have a nice warm area, and I'm not talking about the air temperature, we want to make sure we note that. So when I'm talking about a hot spot of 90 to 95 degrees, I'm talking about where my hand is. So my heating pad goes underneath here. I put my hand right here. That hot spot where that animal could warm itself 90 to 95 degrees is wonderful. And if I go to the cooler end and I put my hand here and I'm measuring the temperature where the non-heated end and I'm measuring, let's say, 80 degrees, 82 degrees, we're right kind of where we want to be. So if I also notice that the cage is uh, very, very humid, too humid being anything above 70% for a python or boa, I'd start getting worried because uh, any kind of water dripping in here, too much water vapor in there, the animal will get a bacterial and fungal infection. So we always want to make sure we address our humidity. In some cases, if you feel like the cage is too humid, you actually can cut out an area of the lid and you could either melt a ton of holes or you could cut this out and put a, some kind of plastic screening in there and now you can give it the proper ventilation. What's really nice about a cage like this, it's inexpensive. It, it basically meets the basic parameters of what this animal needs so it can feel uh, safe. It gets the proper temperatures and humidity and we're basically addressing you know, the basic needs of that animal so it feeds and is happy. Uh, it is also very secure. I love this. This is escape proof. So what, what would the negatives be about this? Well, you could sit here and say, oh, it's too small. So if I have a very large ball python, sure it is. But something like this would be fine as far as size. I could easily keep and breed corn snakes in something like this. Would the corn snake appreciate a larger cage? Yes, that could be fine. As long as I once again made it feel secure and I met all of its needs. But this works well. And this is a great, if I go to a pet store and I buy a snake like this, this is a great transition cage. So if I get it from the pet store and I want the animal, I kind of want its life simple. I want to address the basic needs of the animal. I want to get it feeding multiple different times. I want the animal to settle in. I want to make sure the animal's healthy. I want to make sure everything is good. This is a good way to do it. Another thing to also note, when I'm doing a little chamber like this, it's sometimes worth spending a little bit of extra money, a thermostat. Once again, the thermostat is monitoring the heat source. It's preventing the heat source from making the whole cage too hot. So for 40 or 50 bucks, you can get uh, great safety by having a thermostat in there. And we use lots of thermostats when we're uh, professionally keeping and breeding snakes. All right, so when we're comparing cages that we need, we, get, we need to consider what the snakes are. So I did another video just basically comparing uh, different uh, pythons and boas and their basic requirements and the expectations of them. So here we have, this is a little sambo. This is a lovely little sambo. This is a wonderful beginner snake. It's, uh, it's not too exacting in exactly what it wants to be kept like. It, uh, it appreciates a simple cage, uh, substrate where they can hide. You literally could keep a sambo on sand with a heating pad underneath it in a bin with a little hot spot and basically uh, satisfy the animal what it needs. These guys don't get very big, uh, very easy to deal with, and uh, they're wonderful. And they're often or largely captive bred. So we have something like a boa. So that's a sand boa. So that's a sand boa that comes from a far drier place. So the humidity requirements of that sand boa are lower. Now we have a little boa. And this little boa, 
is squished into its little water dish. This animal is very happy, just like this. This, this animal is basically going into the dish, cooling down, uh, and basically telling me that uh, it wants to be cooler or it wants more moisture. So what this animal will do, it's gonna stick its little nose out of here. But what you could do, if you wanted a cool water dish, like the hide box, with a hole in it, you can often take a bin like this, cut out the middle, or create a hole, and then turn this into a water dish. What you don't want to do is you don't want to make the water too deep because the animal's more likely to go in there as long as its belly can touch the floor and it can sit in there. If it's too deep and the animal goes in there and just swims around, it will start to panic often. It might visit it for a few minutes or seconds and then leave. So if you want the animal to stay in there, you're gonna want water that's only a third to halfway of its body and you want the animal to be comfortable. But using a hole in the top or cutting out something will prevent the water from sloshing around and also prevent the animal from necessarily flooding the cage. So these are things, you know, just little extras that you want to consider when you're keeping these animals. So remember, your husbandry, tools, thermometers, any kind of humidity gauges, any kind of temp guns. So if I take this and aim it at a hot spot, I get a digital readout of the hot spot for that animal. So there's all different ways to manage terrestrial reptiles and terrestrial snakes. I've gone over some of the basic things, but if you can actually take in all these tools and these ideas, you can successfully keep so many different types of pythons, boas, colubrids, king snakes, whatnot. There's so many different animals that all would live in those parameters. Uh, we will come back to another video dealing with arboreal animals like emerald tree boas, green tree pythons, Amazon tree boas and such, which are arboreal and they'll spend more time up in the air doing things like that. Vine snake. So uh, basically, just in, in a nutshell, meeting the needs of your animals, giving it the right enclosure, and just providing proper temperatures, humidity, water, and hiding. And keep your animal safely in the animal, which basically means you want to secure the cage so it cannot get out. Because once your animal gets loose in your house, uh, that's, that often gets you into uh, problems because a lot of times animals will go and hide somewhere and they'll desiccate and they'll die. So uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, hit the notification bell, subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, please tell us more ideas what you'd like to see in your next video. We are reading your comments. Please join our Discord. Also follow us at Nerd Reptiles on Twitter. Also Evil Morph God underscore on Instagram, New England Reptile, on Instagram. But please talk to us. We, we enjoy all your comments. There's so many great comments out there. And literally, it's your comments that keep us doing these videos because I love to hear what you're trying to say and what you have for questions. And I'm trying to answer these questions as fast as we can, but it is a great deal of work. I got Donnie working all day long trying to edit these videos and deal with my uh, craziness.